Hello, Vanity Fair. My name is Bob the Drag Queen. I'm here to teach you some drag slang, a little bit of lingo, a little bit of the Queen's English. A bar queen is a queen who has made her career in the bars, in the gay bars. Because there's club kids and there's bar queens. I am a proud bar queen. Here's a sentence. Look at that bar queen over there walking around with a fistful of singles. You know, Tino Shade is when someone's like, listen, all bullshit aside, this is the reality. I'm not being shady, I'm just being real. Miss Thing No Tino Shade, this uh, color's not good on you. Clock. All right, now, Clock, this is, uh, Clock has some problematic undertones to it. I want just everyone to know that Clock is when someone identifies something in you that people think you were trying to hide. For example, when someone goes, oh, Miss Thing, your hairline is clocked. That means like, I can see the lace on your wig and that is a wig. Like you've been, like we clocked your wig. Hogbody was made popular from RuPaul's Drag Race season six. And it is in reference to specifically Adora Delano didn't wear a corset and she said that she has hog body when she's not wearing a corset. So it's just like having a beer belly. It's the gay version of having a beer belly. Eleganza extravaganza. So eleganza extravaganza is essentially a way of saying like something is extremely elegant and extravagant. So you'll, or you'll do like a big ball. This is, um, this is like a derivative of ballroom culture, but it's not directly from ballroom culture. Um, it's, it's essentially like talking like people in ballroom. Mug is the face. This is the mug. This is where the mug lives. So if someone goes, I want to get a close up of that mug, what they're saying is, I would like to get a shot, of, a close shot of your face. Serving face. When you are serving face, you are giving the mug, you are giving the look. It's essentially like walking the face category. It's not, it's not just like having a beautiful face. It's a lot of this. It is this thing is serving the face, which is giving you one of these. You'll see a queen from like doing her makeup, then she goes, and go, Miss Thing, she's really serving face tonight. Heather. Okay, Heather is a term in reference to the movie Heathers. And if you are a Heather, you are a very pretty girl. You're one of the cool girls. So the Heathers are the cool girls. And you just call each other Heather. Hey, Heather. Oh, hey, Heather. Hey, Heather. Purse first. I popularized the term purse first myself. It is a phrase I came up with on Drag Race. I was asked by Thorgy how I walked into the runway my very first time. And I said, oh, I walked out purse first. And then it kind of became like a catchphrase. It's just like a, it's just like a phrase you shout out when you're feeling, yes, Miss Thing, purse first, purse first, honey. A booby bib or a breastplate is probably the most uh, proper term for it. Is like, it looks, I don't know how else to describe it. It looks like breasts, like large breasts, like a necklace. Imagine if there was a necklace and breasts combined into one, you strap it behind your neck and then you usually wear a necklace to conceal the seat. Hunty is essentially the word honey. So it's like, oh yes, hunty, she's feeling it tonight. Painted. So when you've done your makeup and it looks extremely good, you are painted. Like your makeup is so over, so over the top. You would say, Miss Thing, you are painted on this night. Squirrel friends. It's just girlfriends. Like it's just a goofy way of saying girlfriend. So, you know, these are my squirrel friends. We love hanging out and just like, like chittering and chattering together. Like squirrels do. I don't know that squirrels chat together. I don't know how squirrels communicate. Showboating. I don't know if this is necessarily a drag term, but I know I got accused of showboating on my season of RuPaul's Drag Race. And showboating is basically gloating about your talents. You're someone who really believes in their talents and expresses them and has no qualms about letting everyone know that you truly are that bitch. <laughs> bitch. In my opinion, most people say bitch and you really draw it out longer. So it's like a, um, a uh, affectation of the word bitch. And it, and it usually lives by itself. Bitch. Like that is, the, that's the whole sentence. Boots. So I will use it in a sentence first. You'll say, girl, this outfit is fierce, boots. So in real life, you would say, this outfit is very fierce. But in drag, you would say, this outfit is fierce, boots. Well, sometimes someone, someone will say like, girl, that show was amazing. You can just say boots. Then you have like the house down boots. Now the house down boots is like very, very, very. Like girl, this show is fierce, the house down boots. It's like in Spanish for something like uh, 
grand or grandissimo or grandissimo it's like the more you keep adding the easy 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 it's like the bigger and bigger it gets and that is what the house down boots is i don't speak spanish i just learned that in spanish class in high school 20 years ago <laughs> body adi adi now body adi adi is uh usually referring to when a person has what people would consider an hourglass figure breasts going out hips going in, waist going in, the hips coming out again. Honestly, it can be any extreme version of any body type. So if you're like slim and you're really slim, that's body yadi yadi. If you're muscular and you're really muscular or really beefy or really curvy, that's what body yadi yadi is. A meaty tuck. So a meaty tuck is something that a lot of drag queens maybe don't want to go for, some drag queens do go for. Tucking is the art form of taking your um, genitals and pushing them back to create an illusion of not having a penis. That's usually what tucking is. And a meaty tuck is when you don't execute that incredibly well. So you would say, oh, Miss Thing, tonight, tonight I got a meaty tuck. Don't, don't pan down. Don't point the camera down. The tuck is meaty on this evening. Cooking and baking. Now, cooking and baking refers to when you do your face, you will take powder and you'll highlight this area, this area, your T-zone, this area here, down here, and you leave it on while you're like preparing, like getting your outfit together, and it punches up the highlights in your makeup. So they'll be like, girl, why is your face covered in powder? I'm baking. Drag daughter. Now, a drag daughter is someone that you teach drag to. A lot of times it is specifically reserved for when you put someone in drag for their first time, they'll be your drag daughter. And a lot of other times it's more formal. You have to like basically submit a request to be someone's drag daughter. I have a lot of drag moms. My official drag mom is Peaches Christ. She didn't teach me drag, but she taught me a lot about producing and how to be a business person in drag. But then again, also uh, Peppermint, Bibi Zahara Benet, Sherry Vine, Bianca Del Rio, all taught me a lot about drag just through me watching them and observing them, but I'm not officially their drag daughter. I just learned a lot. Feeling the fantasy. I mean, to me, this seems self-explanatory what feeling the fantasy is. So a big part of drag is a fantasy. Like I create this image of myself where I am this extremely um, wealthy heiress to an to like a, not heiress, like I am the owner of the estate. She is feeling the fantasy to, it's gonna be one of those nights. So giving life is like when you feel invigorated because you saw a great performance, you saw a great picture, you saw um, a great discussion, you love someone's post, it invigorated you. Your life feels more full. That person is giving you life. So I'll be like, girl, I saw, let me try right now. I, when I first moved to New York City, I went down to Barracuda. I saw Peppermint on stage turning the party and she was giving me life. Glamazon. So a Glamazon is a big glamorous lady. Not, doesn't have to be a lady, but that's kind of like the connotation to it. Like a femme presenting larger than life lady who's really glamorous. So it's a combination of the words glamorous and Amazon, and you combine them together, and you say, well, she's a glamazon. She is a, you know, big fierce lady. Relying on body. This is a, a, a phrase that was made popular by Michelle Visage. Stop relying on that body. Uh, meaning you are using your neck down physical attributes to compensate for um, a lack of performance or some other um, aspect of your, your career. Untuck. So untucking is the act of, you, you remember talking about meaty tuck earlier? Y'all remember meaty tuck? Untucking is the undoing of that. So at the end of the night or in the middle of your gig, <laughs> depending on how things are going down there, you'll untuck and you'll, you'll free the bird from the cage. The children. So this goes back to um, giving life mom and children. Basically the children's audience or the people receiving your art. So you say, oh Miss Thing, she's gonna give the children life tonight. She's gonna do a good job for the audience. It's so funny because like to me these are all secondary. Like I'm just so used to saying, oh Miss Thing, she's turning it for the children. Like she's out there giving or doing a really good job so the children, so the audience can enjoy themselves. She owns everything. Now, this is a phrase from Junior who is uh, one of the most iconic people in the history of ballroom. This is from Paris is Burning says some of the most iconic lines in queer history ever. For example, have you ever heard the word, the term opulence? You own everything, O-T-U-L-E-N-C-E, opulence. It is uh, referring to someone like when they look rich 
when they look fierce and it's like, bear in mind the rumor and that person owns everything in this world. Escándalo. I mean, escándalo is a Spanish word and it's like, girl, that was scandalous. I mean, yeah, I think this pretty, this just seems pretty self-explanatory. A drag king is someone, so let's talk about, let's break it down to drag and then drag queens and then drag kings, shall we? Let's break it all down. Drag is blurring the gender line and creating art. It doesn't have to be singing, it doesn't have to be dancing, it doesn't have to be comedy. If you are blurring the gender line and you're creating art, you're then engaging in drag. So for example, uh, if a cisgendered uh, woman is doing is dressing up in high drag, what she's doing is essentially dressing up as a hyper woman or a hyper femme or dressing up like a man doing dressing up like a woman. So therefore you are blurring the gender line. So in order to be a drag queen, you don't have to be assigned male at birth. You don't have to be a man. You don't have to, you, you can just be doing drag. In order to be a drag king, you're doing the version, but it's more skewed toward masculinity. So if someone's doing a hyper masculine performance of masculinity, that person is a drag king. More often than not, drag queens are usually AFAB, meaning assigned female at birth. All right, listen, that's the full fantasy. That's the dictionary. That is, that, oh yeah, f Miriam Webster. This is Bob the Drag Queen's unabridged full dictionary, honey. So if you learn something.